Hello everybody. This is a video series on types of filters. Today we're going to discuss about a low pass filter. So what is a low pass filter? It is a filter that accepts all the frequency below the cutoff frequency and rejects all the frequencies above the cutoff frequency. Now the exact frequency response of a filter depends on the filter design. In the audio world, low pass filters are often referred to as a high cut filter or treble cut filter because they literally block the higher frequencies. All right, let's look at the types of low pass filters. So there are two types. One is ideal and the other is real. So ideal filter is one that has full transmission in the pass band and complete attenuation in the stop band with abrupt transition. So what it means, it as a regular low pass filter, it allows every single frequency below the cutoff and rejects all the frequency above the cutoff. But it gets a little peculiar because, you know, it has a rectangular frequency response, you know. So if you look at this picture here, so if you have a, you have a flat abrupt transition, and let's say that cutoff frequency is a thousand hertz. So when we have an ideal low pass filter, we can, you know, uh, accept up to 999 hertz and reject 1001 hertz to that precision because of this, you know, rectangular function and the brick wall filter. Clearly, that doesn't exist in real life and hence it is an ideal low pass filter. Let's look at a real low pass filter. A real filter approximates the ideal filter by truncating and windowing the infinite impulse response to a finite one. So the transition is no longer abrupt, it's no longer a brick wall kind of filter, but a smooth one due to the application of a window. There are many types of window, hamming, hand, and flat top, just to name a few. So in this picture, you can see that it's a smooth transition, and if the filter, if the cutoff frequency were supposed to be a thousand hertz, so, you know, frequencies below thousand hertz and above thousand hertz would still be accepted because of this smooth transition. And the slope of that curve, you know, the slope of the transition represents the degree of attenuation, which we'll look later in the video. All right, there are two major types of circuits that achieve low pass filtering. One is the capacitive low pass filter, also referred to as an RC low pass filter because it uses a resistor and a capacitor. And the other is an inductive low pass filter or an RL low pass filter. So the RC low pass filter shorts out frequencies above the cutoff whereas the RL blocks frequencies of other cutoff. We'll study these two types of circuits in detail and understand how they accomplish low pass filtering. All right, so as we know, a capacitive LPF is constructed using a resistor and a capacitor. So the resistor is in series with the input signal and the capacitor is in parallel with the input signal. I'll show the circuit diagram in a bit. So the equation for the cutoff frequency, especially for an RC circuit is as given by this equation, F equals 1 over 2 pi times R and C, where R is the resistance measured in ohm, and C is the capacitance measured in farad, and frequency obviously in hertz. So if you have a cutoff frequency in mind and a particular capacitance value, you can plug in those values and obtain, you know, the value of resistance to be used. All right, here's a circuit diagram. On the left, you have an input signal, it passes through the resistor and comes at a junction point, one one leads to a capacitor and the other leads to the output and we observe here that the high frequency have preferred to enter the capacitor whereas the low frequency has become the output why does this happen let's study it all right let's understand the role of a capacitor in a low pass filtering circuit so a capacitor is a reactive device which offers varying resistance to signals of different frequencies entering through it Especially, it offers very high resistance to low frequency signals, but offers very minimal resistance to high frequency signals. Due to the minimal resistance, the high frequency signals tend to go through the capacitor, whereas the low frequency signals aren't able to go through the capacitor because of the high resistance, and hence they just walk out you know, to the output and they become the output. So, the low frequency signals are directed toward the output, they are not able to enter the capacitor because of the high resistance. And hence, you know, you have a uh, you have a simple low pass filter. You just you know, in the output, you just have low frequencies, and the high frequencies have already entered the capacitor, and they're no longer present in the output. All right, let's look at an inductive low pass filter. An inductive low pass filter is constructed using a resistor and an inductor. Inductor is in series with the input signal, whereas a resistor is in parallel with the input signal. 
and the equation is given by R over 2 pi L, R is the resistance measured in ohm, L is the inductance measured in Henry, and F is the frequency measured in hertz. So let's look at the circuit diagram. Alright, so this is a circuit diagram for an inductive low-pass filter. So on the left we have an input signal and they pass through the inductor. And then there is an output which has only low frequency and we observed that the high frequency has been blocked. So let's understand the role of an inductor in an inductive low-pass filter. Alright, so an inductor is also a reactive device just like a capacitor which offers varying resistance to, you know, signals of different frequencies entering through it. But, you know, when we compare it with a capacitor, the only difference is the inductor offers very high resistance to high frequencies and very low resistance to low frequencies. So what happens, you know, when a high frequency signals are trying to enter through the inductor, they're simply blocked because the resistance is too high for them to enter. On the contrary, you know, for low frequency signals, the resistance is very minimal and they easily pass through it and hence they become the output. So in this case, the high frequency signals aren't even able to enter through the inductor and they are blocked and the output is like, you know, devoid of high frequency and rich in low frequency, which is, you know, what is accomplished using a low pass filter. This is a frequency response of a first order low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 5000 Hertz. Uh, notice how the curve is smooth and this is because of the windowing function. In fact, it starts to curve even before the cutoff frequency, which is 5000 Hz. Let's look at higher order low pass filters. Alright, the order of a filter is determined by the number of reactive elements, which is the number of capacitors and inductors in the circuit. So a first order filter has either one capacitor or one inductor. A higher order filter has more capacitors or inductors and this leads to greater phase shift and greater attenuation as compared to the first order filter. Now the filter order is directly related to the slope of the frequency response curve. As we observed in the first order frequency response curve, you know, it was very gradual. So the slope was very less because it's a first order filter. So higher the order, steeper the slope and we'll look at a fourth order filter to see how steep the slope is. Alright, this is a fourth order low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of same 5000 Hz. Notice how it is getting steeper. So higher the order, steeper the, the curve and greater the attenuation, which is most important. And also greater the complexity because you're going to use more and more components to achieve the higher order filtering. All right, for the purpose of demonstration, I'm going to play a white noise in its purest form and then apply a first order and a fourth order filter with a cutoff frequency of 5000 Hz for you to perceive the difference and the presence of a low pass filter. So let's have a basics about what is white noise. So it is a random noise signal having equal intensity at all the frequencies. So it has a constant power spectral density. What it means is that every single frequency is being played at the same time and at the same amplitude. So it's, it's totally unbiased. So we'll use this noise and, you know, to see the effect of a low pass filter. So first I'll be playing a pure white noise followed by the filtered white noise. Alright, I hope you heard the white noise in its purest form and the filtered white noise. So let's look at the uh, applications of low pass filters. So they are used in speakers to direct the low frequency signals either to the woofer or the subwoofer depending on the model. So there is a, a similar RL or an RC circuit which just takes the input of the entire frequency spectrum and then you know only spits out the low frequencies directed to the low frequency drivers. They are also used in AC power lines to cancel out the high frequency buzzing noise. And digital low-pass filters are used in audio editing and mixing softwares. They follow the same principle. They might not have a physical component, but they follow the same math principles. And they have wide variety of applications in music editing, mixing, and analysis. All right. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, hit the comments, and I'll be sure to respond. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.